Today we're going to make some updates to the way I have my Yukon wired for powering the off-grid digital communication system. I recently learned from my Electricity Sensei Kurt KD9 SUV, who's been extraordinarily patient with explaining these concepts to me, that the wire diameter I'm using might be a bit too thin for the amperage I'm pushing through it. And so today we're going to rewire it with this good, thick 10 gauge wire. 10 gauge wire is a carrying capacity for 30 amps. And I don't plan on routinely putting 30 amps through this, but that's going to give me a good wide margin of safety so that I don't burn my truck to the ground. The other issue I want to handle today is a matter of RFI, radio frequency interference. And right now I'm using a really long USB data cable for the DigiRig, and I think that might be introducing some RFI into the system and making things unreliable. So if I can't fix that issue today, I want to at least check it off the list and continue down the troubleshooting process. Now before we begin, I want to warn you, I am not an expert at this. I'm not an electrician. Do your own due diligence with these wiring projects. The only thing that I'm an expert at is, well, okay. I wasn't going to bring it up, but it's probably going to come out anyway. I'm an award-winning artist, okay? There, I said it. Obviously, I've got my gold medal here, and you probably saw my trophy behind me that I won in an art competition two towns over. And it's really not a big deal, but I did make for you an original, never-before-seen schematic, and so here it is. Bam, there it is. See, nothing to get excited about, just some trophy-winning, gold medal-level artwork. This is what the system will look like in my vehicle, for the purposes of powering the radio transceivers and the Raspberry Pi. This is what works in my car. It may not work like this in your car. You'll have to do your due diligence and find out what your car needs. This starts with my vehicle's 12 volt battery. It has a positive terminal and a negative terminal. The positive side goes into the vehicle's wiring harness. The negative terminal connects to the vehicle's metal. Most of the metal, the frame, in your car is part of the negative side of its electrical system. Now you don't have to do this part. Your vehicle's manufacturer already did this. The rest is on us. So in my vehicle, we'll connect the red lead to the positive post that's there right next to the engine. The negative side will connect right to the firewall. That's the vehicle's metal. From there, we've got to figure out a way to get stuff from the engine compartment into the passenger compartment, and we'll look for a pass-through in the firewall. We'll terminate that with an Anderson power pole connector. Those are a lot of fun to crimp on, and I'll show you how to do that. But that's only one connection, and I like to power multiple things. For that, we'll use a three-way splitter. One side of the splitter is going to go to this just regular voice radio. The second will go to the radio transceiver for our digital system. The next we're going to use to power the Raspberry Pi, but it can't take a full 12 volts off the battery, so we'll have to use a 12 volt to 5 volt step down. Now, to make matters more complicated, on the other side of that step down, we have two outputs. One. I'll use for a USB fan that helps keep that radio cool, and the second will go to the Pi. Now the Pi can't send radio digital signals through the electrical system to the radio, so we'll use that DigiRig sound card interface to go from the Pi to the radio. You might notice that we're making some loops here, and loops are generally a bad thing when we're talking about radios and electronics. So we'll use a USB line isolator right here in between the DigiRig and the Pi to help protect that Pi and keep the signal clean. These are some of the supplies we'll be using today. Here is that spool of 10 gauge wire that will pass through the firewall to connect things from the engine compartment into the passenger compartment. In the engine compartment side of things, we'll splice in an inline fuse, which is an important safety measure. We'll crimp on ring connectors to connect the red wire to the positive post and the black wire to the firewall. Now inside the passenger compartment, we'll need to crimp onto that 10 gauge wire and Anderson power pole because here's our three-way splitter and you see it's got Anderson power poles. These are a lot of fun to crimp on. In fact, we'll also need to crimp one on to this 12 volt to 5 volt step down. Let's go ahead and do that now. To do this correctly, we'll need wire strippers, special crimpers for Anderson power poles, and the Anderson power pole pieces themselves. Here we've got plastic pieces, red for positive, black for negative. And we have metal pieces that connect the wire to the plastic pieces. We have small diameter, medium diameter, and large diameter in this kit. This wire on the 12 volt to 5 volt step down is 20 gauge, so it's small. It'll take a small metal piece. I find it helpful to look at a professionally made cable to figure out the proper orientation. Here we have, with the metal pieces on the bottom, red on the left and black on the right. So, let's go ahead and set this up now. Got the metal pieces on the bottom. We'll put red on the left and black on the right. They just slide together. There we go. I've used my wire strippers to strip back a little bit more wire so that these will all fit right into the metal pieces. 
I'm going to take the metal piece. Each one has a bit of a bevel. And it's going to go down in the crimper. And I'll just gently close that over the top there to hold it in place. On the crimper itself, there's a little cheat sheet. It tells me to use the 15 slot for wire AWG size 20. Okay. Now I can slide this in. Just crimp it right down. So satisfying. There we go. This is on there solidly. Let's do that for the black lead as well. Bevel side down. Very nice. I have this little plastic piece which is advertised as some type of fire retardant device. I have no idea if this is helpful or necessary, but it certainly couldn't hurt. So I've cut a slit in the end. We'll just slide these right in. On a larger diameter wire, you may want to put this on first. So next we have our plastic pieces. I'm going to make very certain that the red is going in the red side and the black's going in the black side. This can get a little tricky with small wire like this 20 gauge. But if we're careful, we can get this in there without damaging it. Let's do that with the black. Be super careful. You don't want to bend that wire too sharply. Got that satisfying click. Okay. Giving it a good tug. And these are in. So I'll run this up. We now have our Anderson power pull connector. Okay, let's take a look, see if it works. Perfect. This is a big part of my problem. I've got a lot of stuff crammed into small spaces and really long wires connecting everything together, all the way from this monitor down to where I have this cable snaked into the center console to where the Raspberry Pi plugs in. This is an invitation for failure. And in fact, I know the simple act of opening that center console just now created enough static electricity that this system will freeze or crash within the next couple days. I'm willing to bet that if I clean up this mess and shorten up these cables, I'll eliminate a lot of the issues I've been seeing and increase the reliability of this terminal. We will now remove the extra organs from the patient. Goodness sakes, what was I thinking? This is a disaster. Good riddance. I can have my center console back now. Pull out the old wire and hope and pray that there's enough room for a 10 gauge wire to fit in there. Prayer's not answered. That pair of 10 gauge wires isn't going in. So I will run the positive wire out here to the positive post and I'll attach the negative wire to the firewall somewhere on the inside. First try that you saw anyway. Let's remove the negative lead to the battery for safety before we get started. Now, Kurt, KD9SUV, recommends we do not wire the radio straight to the negative terminal of the battery. Reason being is that there are current sensors on modern vehicles, and if we wire straight to that point, we can potentially interfere with the vehicle's ability to recharge the battery. So we'll find a different spot to put that negative wire from the radio, preferably on the vehicle's frame. I'm going to be working here mostly in silence, but there's a couple things I want you to notice about what I'm doing. First, every time I crimp on a ring connector or a butt splice, you'll see me protecting that connection from the elements with heat shrink tubing. Second, I'm going to be cutting wire to length and then routing it away from things like the hot engine or places it could get tangled up like the gas pedal or the steering linkage. Don't be afraid to cut wire. Be brave.
Now, I realize it will be difficult to see everything that I'm doing because my hands will be in the way and there's a lot of tight spaces that I'm gonna be routing these wires and the components of the system. So if you have any questions about what you're seeing, drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer.
That was a lot of work, but I think I'm going to declare victory and call it a day. This isn't exactly how I envisioned everything turning out, but so far everything's up and running. I've got that good solid 10 gauge wire running for power, and I've shortened up the digirig cable and moved the Raspberry Pi out of my center console so I once again have a place to store 500 Taco Bell hot sauce packets. I'm making contacts and everything's looking good, but time will tell if this setup is any more robust than the last. And then... Time told. As soon as I started my truck, the Raspberry Pi lost power and shut down. This is a very bad thing because if power is cut to the computer without going through the proper shutdown process, the micro SD card it runs off of can become corrupt. And so this necessitated the installation of a mini UPS, an uninterruptible power supply. And I found just what I needed on Amazon. It has five volts, three amps in and out. And that gave me an opportunity to order a few more things that I needed. And I was okay with that because I wasn't terribly happy with the way the project had come together so far. First of all, I had failed to account for powering the HDMI monitor. And so this resulted in a situation with a splitter plugged into a splitter. I don't think that's appropriate, so I ordered an Anderson power pole distribution block. This tucked in very nicely behind the center console. After everything went together and I cleaned up the wires, it started looking really nice. And it's been running for several days now without issues. Okay, so maybe I won't win any art competitions with this one, but until GMC starts putting real radios in their trucks, I think this is the best I'm going to be able to do. I want to thank everyone who's ever taught me about electronics, both living and those who've already stepped on into the next adventure. I really couldn't have done this without you, at least not without electrocuting myself. In fact, I want to thank everyone who's ever been in a mentor role for me over the years. You know, it's no secret guys out there are hurting right now for lack of mentorship. Masculinity, independence, resilience, they're all under attack, and mentors are important, even to guys like me with gray hair on their faces and no hair on their heads. I really appreciate you, and if you've ever been in a mentor role for me, if you've ever taken the time to teach me something, I just want you to know I'm forever thankful for you. You've made my family stronger, and now together, hopefully, with the knowledge in this video, we can help make some other people's families stronger too.